Edie, let's look back in our WFFT experience. Alrighty then. Let's go. So first of all, guys, these are our personal views and you should do your own research if you're interested in volunteering in WFFT. You can check the center's website at wfft.org. Now that we are out of our first volunteer placement, we can look back at our experience as a whole and talk about it a little bit more. Yeah, so first section we thought we could um, do here is like must-dos or haves. So the first point is to read about the culture and, and be respectful. Yeah, so for women, um, we were told that we needed to like keep our cleavage covered, our midriff covered, and basically if you're wearing any shorts, like your ass has to be in them. And for guys, like no side boobage type thing. Side <laughs> boobage, okay. I don't know how to explain like it. You know, like the tank tops. Yeah, or... the stupid stringy <laughs> gym tops that do absolutely nothing. I bet Sean loves those. I yeah, know, he feels bad about himself. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody. He feels bad about himself. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> okay, so the next thing you will definitely need is waterproof gloves uh, because you, of all the cleaning you do um, there. Also, waterproof jacket is quite handy, especially in the monsoon season. And also, any sort of clothing that would be waterproof would be quite good because it's so humid. So especially things that dry quickly are really useful. Like I had these shorts that always dried very quickly, which was very handy. Um, yeah. So what else was there, Lorik? A water bottle, like a decent one, um, a bum bag or a waist pack, like a hat is good to like keep the sun out your face or like to stop like monkeys above you from like pissing on your head or just to stop the sweat going in your eyes. Really, it's a it's good quite idea. Good. Oh yeah, also headband could be quite good for that. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. headband and general medicine. So like lots of plasters, antiseptic cream, um, in Yuri's case, like an ass cream um, <laughs> to prevent. No, guys, chafing is real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so definitely that. So yes, uh, overall, we feel very honored and privileged for being able to help and interact with all the animals, especially with the elephants. Um, but... Yeah, we really don't um, like to moan. However, it wasn't consistently this positive because of some of the following points below. Yeah, and we want to like mention them first so we can end on a high note. So the first point is that um, we were there long term and obviously paid more money than some other volunteers that might have been there short term. And they seem to be in better conditions, um, you know, better accommodation and, and stuff like that. Um, so our first accommodation actually we had for the two first weeks was pretty crazy. Um, it was significantly different from like the other ones. So it was in like the busy public area, you know, there was no clothes rack. It was, it had tiny washing line and someone else was using it as well. Uh, we had no curtain and the showers were like communal and they were always very dirty and the water in the first week it like didn't work like four times so obviously it affects the hygiene and it's just really annoying so we think the easy solution would be to just make all the basic accommodation the same so you know everyone just living in the same conditions yeah and so it's fair as well mm-hmm. yeah um another point is the work in hygiene it's like quite bad so a lot of the time you're scrubbing slime and shite and other stuff and you're not provided with any gloves or face masks or anything like that. If you want to wear gloves, you've got to do provide that yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and in some points there wasn't soap everywhere either. So I think a, a way to solve that is always have soap at every like sink station. And if, you know, they could provide face masks and rubber gloves that would be a bonus yeah so the next point is about uh the food they had there Uh, the vegan food was a really good effort but it could have been made so much better with simple adjustments maybe like adding nuts you know a little bit less spice at some (laughs) some of the meals um maybe using some more potatoes and like the quantity as well it was a little bit disproportionate because obviously People who are vegetarians and uh, meat eaters can eat the vegan food as well. So sometimes there wasn't enough. Um, what do you think, Laurie? 
Yeah, there definitely wasn't enough. And um, like we said with the nuts, so like in, in the meat dishes, they would put nuts in it. And then for the vegan dish, like literally sometimes we got like a pineapple curry and it had no tofu, no potato, nothing. It was literally just pineapple, yeah. which I like pineapple, but fuck, like there was no, like hardly any sort of protein in it whatsoever. So yeah, it was weird how they worked that out. So yeah, and even with the tofu dishes, like a lot of the times, like they were really stingy with it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it'd be good if like we just got more of it. <laughs> yeah, but I still enjoyed all the food. But yeah, yeah, it was nice. All these points are quite valid, yeah, so. Yeah, and uh, we also felt like one day off a week is not enough. Um, When you're on elephants, there is an opportunity sometimes to get like an extra day off, Um, depending on how many volunteers there are. Um. But again, at the meeting, they just say, oh, that's um, there's a second day being released. So if you want it, you can go put your name up, name up on the board. Um, they don't stay in the meeting like, oh, you know, um, first priority goes to the long term volunteers. It's just like first come, first serve type thing. So like a lot of people, again, that were short term or were just leaving on their last week, got like another day off mm-hmm. and like me and Yuri never. And it kind of sucked. Mm-hmm. Um. And the way to solve this would be either making it two days off a week or even just giving volunteers like another half day a week. It would yeah, during the weekend or or offering the another day off if, if available to the long term volunteers first. That yeah, would be, that's a good idea. Um, so another point is the work was very physically demanding, especially if you just arrived and are jet lagged. It was crazy. So we think, right, <laughs> it would have been amazing if they had like an on-site on massage uh, parlor or whatever in there because it would make heaps of money, yeah? It would. Yeah, it would be absolutely amazing. Okay, and we just have three more points now that could uh, that I'm going to mention all together because I think that they could just be resolved with one solution. So uh, the first point is that wildlife compared to elephants is much more intense it's much more fast-paced it's a lot more to take in because there's so much more species there and because it's so fast-paced like you don't get the time to really get to know um your team members like you don't ask any personal questions like you do but you're too focused on your tasks and everything like that and also you don't get to make that much connections with the animals because it's you're just moved on different departments and there's so much happening there so yeah and then the second point is um obviously you make friends when you're there and one of the like rules is that only two old volunteers can have the same day off so after like a week um only two people from the previous week can be off on the same day so that would obviously be me and Yuri would pick the same day off Mm -hmm. but then say we made friends and then we all decided, oh, let's go to a waterfall and we all tried taking that day off, they would just say no because we're all, like, team leaders and we can't go, which yeah. sucks, yeah. And the third point was um, that there was some cases of team leaders, like, that were just really fucking nasty and horrible to people. Like, they weren't good at leading, they were horrible they were to them. they were just volunteers, yeah. Yeah, they yeah. were put into the position, like, no one checks up onto, onto you. And even though this kept happening and there was one constant person who was really nasty to other people, like, I didn't see them get picked up on it at all and they kept being made a team leader. Mm-hmm. So it was like, they didn't really care about it. So we think all these points are... Sort of like the last one, no, but like the first two, like they're kind of understandable in the in the current system they have. But we think all of these could be resolved by just having a permanent member of staff per each team as a leader there. So, you know, there would not be as much pressure for you as a long term volunteer to just learn everything so quickly. You know, all these would be just abolished. And, you know, maybe if the if the person would have a day off, one of the old, like, long-term volunteer could just, like, cover that shift or whatever. Um, but it would be pretty sweet, I think. Yeah. On that note, um, this is all that we really enjoyed. Yay! So, some pros. So, most of all, it's definitely good for your fitness because 
the work is pretty demanding and you feel it and you feel the transformation e- like by each week really like i felt stronger each each week yeah. yeah and because like the organization's so massive and there's so many volunteers like it really puts you out your comfort zone and um really gets you to like social socialize with others and um yeah and you, yeah. eventually you become like comfortable in large groups and you know uh, you work as a team and yeah and you can learn so much from other people's like stories and perspectives um as you know they're from all around the world and from different countries with different political systems and customs and yeah it's just really nice to like know like listen and and hear a bit about them yeah there was one evening where we had a <laughs> where we sat like together at one table and it was like maybe people from eight different countries yeah. at the table in thailand it was like some beginning of a joke or something yeah there was like Very eight cool. of us around the table and we were all like having a laugh and joke and then we were just like wait are we all from a different country and we were <laughs> it was pretty cool very cool um another good point is that like, there was like heaps of filtered water everywhere so you know obviously in that climate it's very essential and it was cold which yeah, was amazing. Yeah. You, mm-hmm. It was cold and you also got the option of like hot water for like tea and coffee. Mm-hmm. It was super cool. Um, also, you got your dishes washed. The only thing you had to wash was your cups. Yeah, unless you had a house duty, but that's a special thing. Um, also, you could get laundry on, on site, which was for, you know, the fee, but that's still pretty cool because they also dried it for you. Yeah. And there was so many cats and dogs. There was like about 30 of each and they were awesome and lovely and just ace to have around. Mm -hmm. And you learn so much about each animal and like the conservation efforts. And obviously a lot of the coordinators have history of like studying this. And it's just you learn a lot. It's really good. Yeah, and the most important thing is obviously you're helping such a um, needed cause and an organization that's got one of the highest release rates in Asia. Mm -hmm. So yeah, as a conclusion, from our point of view, doing probably one week in wildlife in the current system they have uh, would be enough and doing whatever amount of weeks in elephant uh, refuge uh, would be the best deal. Yeah, because elephants is the best. Yay! However, there was like a lot of people that really enjoyed wildlife and a lot of people that were on elephants would opt to like put their name down and um, work a day in wildlife each week because they just like loved it and and wanted a break from elephants. Many people also came back from previous years and stuff like that. Yeah, so so, like a lot. Don't take our word for it. Yeah, like lots of people loved it. But I think just for us, like we really, really enjoyed elephants much more. Yeah. So special thanks and shout out um, goes to all the amazing volunteers we have met in WFFT. Too many to name, but here are some of our unforgettables. So Mario, Danielle, Beverly, Jenna, Dave, Jono. Delphi, Thea, Dylan, Natty and Max, Linda and Stacey, Caroline. Isabel, Katie, holly Ann, Henrique, Julia and sarah yeah we love you guys it was a real pleasure to meet you all and we wish you all the best for the future if you'd like to connect with us you can find us on facebook and instagram by searching laurie and yuri go wild we'll be releasing pictures and updates about our travels there if you have any questions suggestions or we just like to say hi you can personal message us um, through our facebook page or by email at lgogowild at gmail.com So this is it guys, have a lovely day, whatever and whenever you are, stay inspired, happy and wild. Much love guys, bye! Bye.